Doctors of Reddit, how often do you see patients after they have tried to self-medicate? What's the worst mistake you've seen? I was working in a clinic when a man a man came in with his blind wife. She is diabetic. And during my questioning I found out she had had a few episodes of low blood sugar in the past few months. And I mean low as in unable to ingest food to raise her blood sugar. The husband told me he had to inject his wife to bring her around. Usually, in these cases you would inject glucagon, which is basically the opposite of insulin. It raises blood sugar. He proceeds to tell me that the glucagon is too expensive, so he has been dissolving sugar in water, drawing it up, and injecting it into her thigh. I tried to hide my shock, but it must have been obvious. He just looked at me and said, well it worked, didn't it? I tried telling him all of the reasons he should use glucagon and not sugar water but he wouldn't have it. I even told him that the pain of the injection is probably what woke his wife up, not any increase in blood sugar. He said the glucagon was too expensive. I called around to a bunch of pharmacies and found it for $20 for two injections, but he still refused to buy it. We ended up calling Adult Protective Services. TL. DR. Husband injected his blind diabetic wife with sugar water to revive her from low blood sugar episodes. Good job. I am very glad you called Adult Protective Services. Lady in her mid 60s comes in with a terrible burn on her hairline and scalp. I ask what happened, and she said she was coloring her hair with the leftover dye from a month or so ago. Needless to say, she had a third degree chemical burn all over her scalp. Okay, that's problem one. We ask her if she has any allergies because we want to give prophylactic antibiotics. She says no. We ask about her daily meds. She rattles off a bunch including 1000 mg of amoxicillin, augmentin. We ask how long she's been taking the augmentin. She replies 2 years. Every day, for 2 years, she's been taking massive doses of antibiotics. Her reasoning, to keep myself from getting sick. We went hunting for side effects, found oral and vaginal thrush, massive yeast infection in her colon, malnutrition, stomach ulcers, and multiple open sores on her feet and knees. Plus, she got a super infection on the burn site a few days later. No fun. TL. DR. Don't take antibiotics if you don't need them. Seriously. Not a doctor, but when I was about 16, I started having these little red irritated spots show up on my arm. My mom was immediately like, you have psoriasis is all, just go tanning. So I tanned for about a week, and they just got worse. Now I had them all over my body, I had spots on my eyelids even. So I go to the doctor finally, turns out I had ringworm and by tanning, I was basically rubbing them all over with the lotions and incubating while I tanned. Thanks, mom. I posted in a thread above this about how I got ringworm from a tanning bed, it was you. Pathologist, I've seen a few cases of patients who basically wreck their livers through use of some sort of herbal remedy, like for weight loss or something similar. Be careful with unregulated dietary supplements is what I'm saying. We got given a case in a lecture of a man who had a rash on his foot, googled it and decided it was eczema or some similar inflammatory disease so ordered and applied a steroid cream. For those who don't know these kind of steroids act by dampening the immune system. The overactivity of which is the cause of diseases like eczema and psoriasis. However he in fact had a fungal infection and had was just reducing his body's ability to fight it off. If I remember correctly by the time he got to the doctors he needed it amputated. TL. DR. Go to the doctor. I have a weird rash that I can diagnose on Google. This just convinced me to schedule a doctor's appointment. Pharmacist here. Patient came in and wanted to self-medicate his cat's pinky. He wanted to know what the vet would prescribe and if it was available somehow over the counter. After a long and trying discussion, he is insistent on putting generic neosporin in his cat's eye. I repeatedly instructed him that it wasn't safe due to sterility reasons and that it could harm the cat, worsen the cat's condition, or cause some other problem for the animal. His reply to me, well, I'll try it in my own eye first and see. And just like that, as mysteriously as he arrived, he was gone. A doctor, first one that comes to mind, although probably not the worst, was a woman who came in with worsening back pain. She had fallen the previous day, and filled a gallon size bag with ice, and placed it on her back. 
she fell asleep with it on her back and a few hours later she noticed that her back hurt even worse. So she took another bag of ice and put it on. And once again. Fell asleep. When I examined her she had two large areas of burns with blisters on her upper back. Each about 6 inches in diameter. When I took a picture and showed it to her. No. I will not post the picture. Her eyes welled up with tears. She couldn't believe that ice had given her a second degree burn. Lesson 15 20 minutes at a time every 2-3 hours maximum for heat or ice packs. TL. DR. Patient left ice on her back too long, got a nasty burn. I work in a dental office. Most common thing we see is people placing an aspirin on their gums next to an aching tooth. All that does is severely burn the gums and makes the pain worse. I've also met a few people over the years who have taken their own teeth out with a pair of pliers. One guy we saw had a problem tooth. Went to pull it out, pulled the wrong one then tried again and pulled the problem one. He shattered the alveolar bone in that area and had to be sent to an oral surgeon immediately. Resident physician here. I've had numerous patients who've rejected medical treatment for a small, localized, and easily treatable cancer in favor of naturopathic homeopathic remedies. Inevitably, they ray present years later with diffusely metastatic cancer in their brains, liver, bones, it's everywhere. By that point, the conversation shifts from how I can cure them to how I can make them comfortable before they die. For example, woman has progesterone receptor positive breast cancer. This means that the hormone progesterone will make her cancer grow faster. She goes to her naturopath, who prescribes her tubs of progesterone cream for years, which most certainly made her cancer worse. But it's okay, she tells me, it was years of natural progesterone. Nurse here, at a get together with friends, where the wine drinking got out of hand. I had a friend burn himself on the oven while making pizza, then try to cauterize that wound with his lighter. I'm an EMT. One of my first calls was an 80 plus year old man living in an assisted living facility. He had bought at least 150 bottles of some naturally lose weight quick pills that he saw late night on TV. He had been taking an excess amount of them for at least a day straight. We got there and his mental status was clearly altered. Didn't know where he was, etc. I wish I still had the picture of the stacks of cartons he had in his small room. I still wonder how he got them inside of the facility. Med student here. Literally all the time. I've seen. Super overdosing OTC meds guy with bloody stool and abdominal pain who we found out used 4 goodie powder packets a day for over 5 years. Patient who had someone try to nail file his hemorrhoids. Not sure how he thought that would help. Massive infections from people literally stapling a wound shut with an office stapler. I had a patient who came in saying that she had a sore throat so she took her cat's expired antibiotics and wanted to know why she wasn't getting better. Well done, they'd expired. Jeez, talk about stupid. Physician here, the one that stands out from among the rest of the field. Life-threatening problems with OTC acetaminophen ibuprofen naprexin happen all the day long. Happened many years ago while I was a medical student. I was serving my rural medicine rotation at a primary care practice in the sticks. A man came in for an urgent appointment for a rash. I went to see him first to get working on the history. In the exam room I met a very nice, young, fit man sitting bolt upright on the exam table looking very uncomfortable. During the history, it was revealed that he was a telephone line repairman, and was working, in late summer, out on the telephone lines around the county, climbing them to reach the wires. He had been exposed to poison ivy this way over both arms and much of his torso, which had happened before. However, this time the rash was worsening with time. I asked him to remove his dark colored shirt, and after he did I almost fainted. He had open wounds all over his arms and chest. All of the blisters from the poison ivy had unroofed and the tissue underneath was destroyed. Everything was bright red, bleeding, and weeping. It looked intensely painful. I'm having a hard time describing it. It was the worst skin findings I'd ever seen. I thought for sure this was Stevens Johnson syndrome or 10, so I started asking about medication use. He told me he takes no medications at home, but that his grandmother gave him a gallon of solution to put on the rash, which he had been using regularly since the poison ivy began. He didn't know what was in it. We called grandma. What was in it? Was bleach. 
he got to go for a fun trip to the burn center. Poor guy. TL. DR. Man treated really bad poison ivy with bleach. Lots of skin was lost. Heard the story, but didn't see the patient. A woman in her 60s presented to the O with episodes of passing out during sex. She underwent a full workup, cardiac, neurological, when she was admitted, and no cause was found, so she was discharged. She returned again with the same complaint a few days later, and divulged that this had actually happened during sex both times. Upon further questioning, it turns out that her husband had been using topical nitroglycerine paste on his penis for erectile dysfunction. When they had sex, the medicine was absorbed into her bloodstream, causing her blood pressure to drop precipitously. Her husband was advised to discontinue this practice. TL. DR. Stick to Viagra. People with tooth pains trying some miracle remedy and when the pain stops they think they are healed. What they don't know is that it means their nerves have been infected. In fact, so serious that the nerves died and rotting below the gums. Only until the pain starts again and their so called remedy doesn't work do they go to the dentist. By then there is no choice to but to remove the teeth and probably some additional surgery too. BTW dentists poke sharp objects at your gums for a reason. It's to check for periodontal disease. Most dentists also don't fool with making payment arrangements. This means people with no money get no dental care. Given the risk that I've heard comes with untreated abscess I find it really concerning that dental insurance is not mandated by the ACA. I did an MRI on a patient who had treated her breast cancer with sodium bicarbonate. The patient presented to them with numbs hands and neck pain. The MRI showed extensive bony metastases and a pathological fracture of C2. Basically the cancer had spread all through her body, and had weakened her bones to the point that they were disintegrating, putting her at risk of damaging her spinal cord. Or worse, it's more just sad that people want to believe that these simple remedies can treat complex issues as opposed to modern medicine. I'm a medical student, I have two that stand out. First, we had a guy come into the free clinic complaining of knee pain. He is a larger guy, an ex-football player who developed a bit of a gut after he stopped playing. He said that he has some old injuries, torn meniscus, chronic arthritis, etc. He used to go to his doctor in another state, who would drain the knee and give him a steroid injection every so often. When he lost his job, he lost his insurance too, hence being seen at the free clinic. Before he decided to come to us, though, he decided it was a good idea to take a needle and try to drain his knee himself. Four times, on physical exam, the knee is massively swollen, tender, bright red, classic signs of a septic joint. We weren't equipped to treat it in the free clinic, so we strongly encouraged him to go to the air. He didn't want to go because of his insurance situation. We tried to explain the gravity of the situation to him, but he refused to listen. Without prompt treatment, he could end up losing his leg. We offered to call him an ambulance to take him to the air, but he refused and left the clinic. Never did find out what happened to him. Second, this one I heard second hand from a classmate, we had a firefighter come in with some burns on his leg. I believe they were incurred from a drunken cooking accident rather than any on the job heroics, but I could be mistaken. Anyway, the burns were serious but he was expected to make a full recovery quickly enough. He was discharged and instructed to eat a lot of protein to help him recover. He interpreted this as get as much protein into your body as possible, by any means necessary. He goes home, takes some protein powder and mixes it up with water, and sets it up in an IV. Needless to say, he developed a pretty serious bloodstream infection. It prevented his burn from healing correctly and he ended up needing a partial amputation of his foot. He eventually recovered, but it took way longer and there were so many unnecessary complications. I'm a pediatric nurse. Parents brought their child in with weakness. Through the general admission questions, we discovered that they were into natural treatments. When their infant child developed tummy problems, they decided to give her a bottle of honey water to help with that. The baby was diagnosed with botulism. It says right on the honey bottle not to let kids under like to eat it. We had a patient come in who was using duct tape to treat various skin ailments. Not the end of the world if you have a wart and just use a small piece of it only on the wart. This woman was using giant strips of duct tape that she'd leave on for months at a time. On her face, her arm and foot. 
When the duct tape was removed, huge square portions of her skin came off with it. She has a long, rectangular scar on her face now from it. Not self-medicating but something even worse, ignorance denial. Woman came in with a tennis ball sized tumor extending out of her left breast. When asked why she didn't come in earlier she said she thought it was normal. Worst mistakes I've seen are patients coming in for treatment when it is too late and the disease is way too advanced. My mother-in-law, rest her soul, had finished menopause previously and was bleeding vaginally for 2 years before telling anyone, kids, doctors. She fought for 6 years but cervical cancer took her life. When she was first diagnosed it was at stage 4 already. Please people don't be freaking stupid. If there's something wrong get some help. As a veterinarian, the holy trifecta are giving aspirin to cats, giving ibuprofen to dogs, giving estrogen to dogs, usually done by MDs or nurses. All three of these run a good chance of killing the animal. Not a doctor, but I was observing in the year for this. During my senior year in high school, I did a program called New Visions that allowed seniors to skip half their day at school and instead spent it job shadowing doctors, surgeons, nurses, physical therapists, etc. I scrubbed did surgery, saw a bunch of births, vaginal and c-section, assisted during codes, and was eventually certified as an EMTB through the same program. It was awesome. Man comes into the air after trimming trees on his farm and a very large branch had landed on his head. He had split his skull and instead of going to the air, he had his wife clean his scalp with vodka and staple his scalp shut with a staple gun and thick sewing thread that they used on horses. According to him anyways, it was severely infected and nearly gangrenous. Several of the staples had created micro fractures on the skull too apparently. The adox face when the man nonchalantly described how he just got drunk and had his wife use the staple gun on his skull was hilarious. Guy had to go into surgery and it took about 6 hours and several skin grafts to repair the damage. That sounds like an awesome program. You were really lucky. Only semi related, but the gym teacher at my junior high had a student who broke his arm during class, and the teacher's response was to insist that it was only a sprain, and that the student should do jumping jacks to help it feel better. His classmates had to call him an ambulance. My uncle is a doctor and a few years ago, when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go into medicine or not, he let me shadow him in his office for a day. Well this one girl came in to see him. She was absolutely beautiful, mid-twenties, perfect makeup hair, everything. She was in to see my uncle because her toe was in unbearable pain and she could barely stand to walk anymore. Well my uncle has her take her shoe off, and I almost threw up. He had to take a second and turn away to collect himself. Her toe was like three times its size, and the outside looked slimy and like the skin was about to drop off. After a few seconds of stunned silence, my uncle asked what happened to it. She said she was walking one day and she cut her toe pretty bad on some glass while she was at her apartment. She called her grandmother and asked if there was anything she should do to stop the bleeding and heal the infection. She said her grandmother was a shaman, and apparently she went to her for all medical advice. Well guess what the grandma told her to put on it? Mayonnaise. Yep. She didn't even clean it or anything. Just plopped some mayonnaise right on it. We asked her how long she had been doing it for. Two weeks. Constantly. The smell was absolutely terrible. And when my uncle even slightly poked it with something, she would almost scream in pain. He immediately told her to go to the hospital and told her that one of his buddies would be waiting there for her. So later than day, my uncle's friend calls back and said that they had to do surgery on her toe, and that there were two or three pieces of glass embedded deep in her toe. He said that when the surgeon made an incision, the toe basically exploded and pus went everywhere. They had to remove all the dead skin, and almost had to remove the toe because the infection was so bad. But apparently she made a really great recovery, so that's good. Me and my uncle will never forget that though. I'm not a doctor, but I work at a pre-post surgical eye clinic. The worst I think I've ever seen was someone wore their contacts for 3 months straight. It was gross. Remember guys, take out your contacts at night, and wash them like you were told to do. After my mother's friend had her cornea fall off I'm very protective of my eyes. I just can't understand how they do that. Mine get dry and uncomfortable after half a day, and sleeping with them in just makes it even worse. 
Just take 5 minutes to change them for god's sake. Guy came in with a deep laceration to the leg. Genius decided he would super glue the wound shut. It became infected and then gangrene set in. He then waited until his leg was a greenish black before coming in. He lost the leg. I work as a caregiver. I had a patient who tried to holistically cure Parkinson's. For 10 years. When I started caring for him. He was a human statue who could only communicate by blinking. His crazy hippie mother was behind a lot of it. She brought in shaman. Healing gazers. Oil enemas. You name it. After 6 months of this. I dragged his butt to a neurologist to be put on meds. Today he walks. Talks. Plays piano. Goes to a local college. And even puts on concerts. When I think of those 10 wasted years. I just shake my head. To this day. The minute someone starts yammering about alternative medicine. I shut that crap down. I've seen what it does to people. I am not a doctor but this is important. About 10 years ago my now mother-in-law had what everyone thought was a severe panic attack or mild heart attack. They rushed her to the hospital and found out it was her gallbladder. She said it was nothing serious and didn't get it removed. About 3 years later same thing happens. Possible heart attack turns out it's her gallbladder. Her husband, my wife, and I were all there in her room when the doctor is recommending taking it out. She says no. The doctor then tells her no more spicy food, junk food or fast food. After he leaves she starts going off about how doctors just want to cut people open to make money. And I swear, she says, I just need lemon juice. That will fix it. Fast forward another 3 years later of not listening to her doctor and taking lemon juice. My wife gets a call around midnight from her dad who is mumbling incoherently. After about 30 minutes he explained to my wife that my mother-in-law had woke up screaming painfully and he had rushed her to the ear and was scared she was going to die. The hospital had told him that she was going into emergency surgery. About 4 hours later we found out that they had removed her gallbladder and that it had actually ruptured. She is still alive and still tries to give my wife and I medical advice. Don't you just love that part with the being incredibly wrong and yet still they have to know better than everyone. It is amazing how many people truly believe DRs are all buttholes. MD here. Patient a few weeks back came in very very yellow, jaundiced, and had hundreds of marks over his entire body from scratching, severe pruritus, his liver function tests were through the roof, total bilirubin 28, we did the full workup, labs, ultrasound, MRI, even liver biopsy, nothing obvious. Turns out the guy was taking supplements by the handful from GNC. He had acute vitamin A poisoning. Great case. Gynecologist friend in Lebanon told me about women trying to abort by themselves due to abortions being illegal. So you have the patients coming into a with hemorrhages due to knitting needle insertion. And that is a classic. But a very frequent case is massive septicemia due to the insertion of a raw piece of meat. Or, sometimes a dead bird. The crazy part is that those cases happen quite frequently. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.